Great. Before. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to show you is just how to change the toner and the staples and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys do that or not, but if you ever run into an issue where you have to, um, the toner is right here in the front of the machine, and they're labeled one and two. You're just going to pull down one, and then two pops out like that. And this is the toner. This is exactly what it looks like when it comes out of the machine. So, or I'm sorry, when it comes out of the box. So that's your toner. And then you're just gonna line it up. Oh, not that hard to do. Push it in until it snaps, and then push the one back up again. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Easy. This is your main on and off switch. You don't ever have to turn this off though, unless you're, you know, you're away for the summer or something like that. Um, but you, but that's there in case you do need to turn it off for some reason. Your staples are located in here. There's just a little, little uh, thing that you pull to open up that door. Um, you're going to take the green tab right here and just pull it out till it snaps. And then um, this green part right here, that those are your staples, and they just pull straight down, oh, just like easy. that. What you're actually changing is the white cardboard cartridge down here. So when you open up the box of staples, you'll see the white cardboard cartridges with the arrows going up. So you're going to put them through the bottom and then pull the little tail, like the little piece of tape tail off, and then just put it right back in. Um, it's easier to do when you're right in front of it. <laughs> When, after you've gotten this in, make this is important, make sure that it, your staples are snapped in there because you're going to push this button and it shoots back into the machine. So if it's not in there all the way, the staples fall down into the machine, you have to place a service call. So. Okay, so those are your supplies. Um, you also have your paper supplies down here. This first tray holds 8.5 by 11 paper only. You'll notice that on all these trays, you'll have a little max line right here. Just make sure you don't overfill the paper tray. Make sure the paper guides are right next to the paper also. This tray um, holds up to 11 by 17 paper, and you can easily change the size just by adjusting the, tray, the, by adjusting the paper guides. And then this, this drawer down here is actually two trays. One, or this would be um, three and four. And this also holds eight and a half by 11 paper only. And then, of course, you have your max line. These trays are a little bit deceiving because it looks like you can fill them more than you can. Just make sure you pay attention to that. Is there no drawer for the very large paper? The, what is that, 17? The 11 by 17? 17 by 17. That would be this middle drawer here. Okay. So you can, right now it has eight and a half by 14 in it, but you can adjust it okay. to fit 11 by All 17. Right. Okay, so um, those are your supplies. When you're looking at the machine here, it is defaulted to copy. So when you walk up to it, it's automatically going to be in copy mode. Mm -hmm. So if you need to make a quick copy of something, you're just going to put the document face down in the document feeder, face down on the glass on the left-hand side, okay? Either one of those. And then just hit the start button. You're going to use the number keys to tell the machine how many copies you want. And then the CA key here, this is your clear all key. It clears everything and takes you back to your default settings. The C key is also a clear key, but it only clears the quantity that you choose. So if you set the whole machine up and you accidentally hit another zero or something, you can just hit the C button and not have to reset Perfect. the machine. Um, okay, so on the copy screen, on the right-hand side, you'll see a button that says exposure. Exposure is how you're going to lighten and darken your toner in case you ever need to. Just select that button and then you're going to choose manual and then you can lighten or darken or lighten. Okay. Uh, right underneath exposure, there's a button that says paper select and those, that's just how you pick your specific tra paper tray if you need to. But if you, for instance, are putting a, copying something from an 8.5 by 14, the machine's going to automatically know to go to that larger tray. So you don't have to pick a tray unless you have special paper somewhere. That's good for me. So <laughs> you just select the paper select button. Here's your tray one your tray two, and your tray three, okay? Oh, and your bypass tray is over here. That's the one that pops up on the side. I think it's Does it automatically know the bypass? No, you have to pick it. Oh, okay. So when you put the paper in the bypass tray, you have to still have to go to paper select okay. and pick it. I know that some machines automatically yeah. do it for you. 
Okay, so that's the paper select. Right underneath that is copy ratio. This is your reducing and enlarging. When you select this button, you'll see that you'll have some presets here that you can choose from. So the presets are labeled like um, 11 by 17 to 8.5 by 11. When you use the presets, they're awesome because it automatically picks the paper tray for you too. So you don't have to hit one button, then go to your paper tray and pick the other one. So those are great. Those are my favorite. You can also use the up and down arrows. And the other way to reduce in the large is using this auto image button. And what that does is it takes the size of your document and it will automatically fit it to whatever paper tray you pick. So that's, it's a, that's a double process. So you're selecting auto image, selecting OK, and then you're going to your paper select and picking a tray also. That's why I like the presets because it eliminates having to pick that tray. Okay, um, on the left hand side, you'll see your two sided copies right here. One to two, two to two, two to one. So those are all your duplexing. Those make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right underneath that is your output button and under here, this is where you're gonna find your stapling. Right there. And you have three different staple options in upper left hand corner, two to the left, and one to the right. Okay. Also under this output button are your sort and your group keys. The machine should be automatically sorting for you. That just means if you have three documents and you're making three copies of each of them, they're going to come out in order. Page one, page two, page three. Page one, page two, page three. If you don't want it like that, Say you have five documents and you're making 27 copies and you want them all to stack all of page one together, all of page two, that's going to be group. But the machine should be sorting automatically for you. It can be defaulted both ways, so I'm assuming that it's probably. Now when printing comes from another room like just now, <coughs> does that override everything that's going on here? No. What happens whenever people are printing at the same time or copying, it's kind of first in, first out. Okay. So um, when you select this button here that says job status, if you select that job status button, you will see what's lined up to print and what order okay. they're going to print in. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, that's about it for the basic copying. That's the basic, basic stuff. That's the stuff you're going to use all the time. There's also a button up here that says special modes. And under here, this is where you're going to find the more advanced stuff. Like you could do things like margin shifting. So if you're going to be taking pages, these pages, and putting them in the three ring binder, mm -hmm. you might want to move the text over a little bit. So that's where you can go into this margin shift. Tell the machine you want to move it to the right, and then over here, tell it how far you want the machine to move it. Okay. Right, but yeah, yeah, right, but yeah, I know that's really nice. This I like this one too. Um, the erase button allows you to erase around the edges of your document. So let's say you have a copy you copied out of a book you know three years ago or something it has the black lines mm -hmm. around the side mm -hmm. you can select the erase button and you can erase this edge erase right here this erases all four edges of the document oh, and then over here you can tell it how far in you want it to erase this is also great for headers and footers mm -hmm. page numbers things anything you want to get rid of around the side yeah. of the mm -hmm. document um, dual page copy is also another great one especially for schools this is if you are copying something from out of a book. You could take the book, line the spine of the book up with the eight and a half inch line, and then when you select this dual page copy button, the machine will copy both sides of the book for you and give you two separate eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Whoa. So instead of getting the big long paper or having to turn the book upside down and all that stuff, you could just do it straight from here. How does it know that? <laughs> <laughs> you can even select this select the OK button, which brings you back to the main screen, mm -hmm. and then you could add two-sided to it. Oh, wow. And then it'll take both of those pages, and instead of getting two separate pages, you'll get one front and back. Yeah. So you can do it that way, too. My mind is blown. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and then if you want 15 copies of that, you can hit 15, and you're, you know, okay. you, it's not a double process. You don't have to make the copies first and then run them through again either. So. That's nice. A um, couple other things under special modes, pamphlet copy. This is great for when you're using 11. You can do 8.5 by 11 too, but the 11 by 17 paper works the best for this. But what it is, is if you have 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper for your originals, full 8.5 by 11 sheets, you can take these and put them in the document feeder and select this pamphlet copy button. And what it does is it takes those documents and it reorders them It'll put them on the large 11 by 17 paper in a magazine format. So 
you, those pages come out, all you have to do is take them and fold them in half and you have a magazine. Okay, and it reorders the pages so you don't have to put like page one, two, mm -hmm. six, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's super, super nice. And if you want to make eight and a half by 11 um, pamphlets, you can do that too. Uh, you have to make sure that you have an eight and a half by 11 tray set up in landscape position. Okay. So this would be portrait. Right. Mm -hmm. Landscape would be going this way. So you'd have to put some eight and a half by eleven in here to get that work. And then you would also have to select that auto image button so that the machine shrinks the document for you. Okay, so you have to combine mm -hmm. a little bit. But the it's nice, the nicest on the larger um, paper. If I scroll down to the next page, you have a covers and inserts button. This is my favorite feature. I think this is great. Um, if you're using colored paper or something like that, maybe you have a 10 page document and you want to make something a little bit nicer for the parents or something, um, you can take your colored paper, whatever you want to use for a front and back cover, and you can put it in the bypass tray or you can put it in one of the trays down here, it doesn't matter, and go into this covers and inserts button. Under here you'll see a button that says front cover and one that says back cover. If you want a front cover, you select that front cover button. Um, tell the machine whether you want to print on the front cover or leave it blank and then tell the machine where you have the colored paper that you want to use. Mm -hmm. Then you can select back cover to do the same exact thing. It's the same screen and everything. And then you can tell the machine you want 27 copies or whatever and um, you can tell the machine to staple it, double side it, whatever you want to do. And then when the machine makes those copies it knows to pull the first and last sheet from wherever you told the machine you had that colored paper. I love that feature. It it's makes everything look so nice, yeah. Wow. Um, and that's really about it under here. There are some other things too, but um, those are the things I just showed you I think are the most useful and help you out the most. So that's copying. Do you have any questions for, about copying at all? All these things too, if you ever print to this machine, you'll see that on your print driver, if you select the properties button before you hit that okay button at the bottom, you can staple, you can double side, you can do a lot of that stuff that I just showed you too. Now scanning. Scanning is called image send because you're taking an image and you're sending it to a folder. So that's how you can kind of remember. Um, but image send. And then from here you're going to select the button that says address book. And then you'll see all your names here. You're just going to select where you want it to go. So I'm assuming you're going to want it to go to your folder. So select your folder and then hit the start button and it will go into your folder. Whoa. That's amazing. Do you guys know where your folders are located? No. Judy is right here. She She's the closest one if that helps you. Okay, let's... Do you have a folder on your computer that says scans on it, on your desktop? Mm -hmm. so. No? I really don't know how I could figure out where they're actually going. I'll have to ask okay. Patty. You yeah, need to, I'll ask uh, Patty. Help us with Patty's that. our IT Windows person. Facts. Windows facts and scans? It yeah. would probably just say scans on it. Like, here, you know what? I can tell you what it would be. Yeah, it would be called scans. I just don't know what this is. This is, says admin one. This could be like a server or something like that. It probably is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but <clears throat> let's try to scan something to see. I'll just scan a piece of paper. Just to make sure that it at least goes through. Is it two words? Yeah. I was going to say. Yours last has space to No, it says network error. So okay. Um, if you have an IT person, you can yep. have them take a look at it, and if they need any help, they can actually call the 800 number. They can remote in and Perfect. help you out, but they might charge you for it. That's okay. Um, We're to the point where we need scanning more we and do. more. We so okay. we need scanning. Yeah. It yeah. looks like the hard part's all set up. Right. It's probably just a setting or yeah. something like right. that. If you okay. change servers through the year or something like that, so okay. it shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, but that's that's how scanning works. Easy. Okay. Um, last thing I wanted to show you were, was the jam areas of the machine. If the machine jams on you, I always save that for last. Yeah. Um, if the machines jam on you, it will show you a picture of where you need to look. But just to give you an idea, you have one up here. And then there is a button right here that pulls up and this lifts oh, down. Easy. Mm -hmm. And I think the rest of them are on this side. <laughs> yeah. 
So if you look here, you'll see there's like a little bluish purple button. Pull that open. And then there's one here. Great. That's very There's easy. also one on the side, too, that I found. Oh, this yeah, one? that one. Uh -huh. That you found. Yeah, we found it the other day. Yeah. Yeah. There. And then actually I think there's one here too. Wait. No, this, this one doesn't look up. No, this one doesn't look up. I guess it's here. Um, but that's it for the GMA areas, I think. I don't think there's any more. Any questions on anything? Do you want to just show them how to do faxes? Faxes? Sure. Mm -hmm. Faxes is Faxes are also image send. And you'll see here, um, you're in scanning mode, mm -hmm. but as soon as you start dialing a phone number, it will change to fax. Mm -hmm. And then you just hit, you can just hit the start key. Do you have any fax numbers in here? Let's see. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so faxing's easy. You, it's image send, dial a number, hit the start hit button. The start button. And it, Way it goes. goes. <laughs> and the fax you would put in. Up would you put it up here, here. or on the glass? Either, either one doesn't matter. Okay. Oh. Same as copying. The one question that we've had in the past is it does not tell you that the fax has been sent. I mean, you can hear it dial and come through, but there's not a confirmation that comes through. Is there any way that we sure. can see that? I can turn the confirmation pages on for you. If that would like. be great. I could do that. Or the other thing, if you want to save paper completely up to you but when you send the fax if you select the job status button it'll tell you at the top when oh, it's gone through that's enough. We don't need to uh, yeah that. that's yeah. fine as okay. long as we have some indication and then e up here right here where it says job queue and complete once the fax you've seen the fax has gone through if you want to double check it just select complete and it'll tell you it'll say okay or it'll say failed okay well, if it oh. fails it'll probably send yeah. give yeah. you a sheet yeah. okay oh, very good that's a great machine. <laughs> you guys have no idea what we had <laughs> back in 1986.